Hello and welcome. My name is Elizabeth. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm really glad you're here because I read We Need to Do Something by Max Booth the Third, and I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to start, obviously, with as spoiler-free as I can do, which is that a family of four, mother, father, a uh, little brother who's... I don't exactly have a name, age. I, I'd put him at about seven, eight. Um, and then um, our main character, who we see uh, the entire story through her point of view, Melissa, she is the teen daughter, probably 15, 16 years old. And a tornado comes through, and they don't have a basement. So they go to their bathroom. They bring a couple of blankets and, you know, assuming they'll be there for a little while. And they go into the bathroom, and the storm comes. And the storm goes, and they can't get out of the bathroom because a tree has fallen and wedged its way on t- into the door, and they can't get out. So um, the rest of the story is them in the bathroom. You know, like, you don't have some life-sustaining things in bathrooms. So, um, yeah, that's the plot. So if you want to know all the details, well, not every detail, but a lot of the details, certainly the the important plot points, um, join me for the ride. Our parents are Diane and Robert. Our main character is Melissa, and her little brother is Bobby. It's a tornado warning. As I said before, they don't have a basement. They're going to go to the bathroom. Um, Mom brings a bunch of blankets with her. Melissa has her cell phone obviously. And um, dad, Robert, brings in a bottle of booze with him. Uh, The storm comes through. As I said before, they're ready to leave the bathroom. They can't. There's a tree wedged against it. And um, so begins our story. Now, one of the first things that you figure out about this family is that dad is very verbally abusive. Um, He calls them effing idiots. He um, tells them they're wastes of space. They're fools. They don't know anything. That I mean, he just says terrible things to his wife and kids. Things that like you just you don't want your husband or father to say about you. <laughs> um, and he drinks consistently um, throughout this. I mean, obviously he's an alcoholic. The some of the stories that we get. Um, Bobby is at that delightful age when poop jokes are the funniest thing ever and butt jokes are the funniest thing ever. So they're in a bathroom, right? So it's a lot of like, you know, Melissa stinks like a butt or, you know, that kind of little brother annoyingness. So um, they're in there after they've realized that they're stuck in there, Melissa um, opens up her phone and starts looking through it, and her father grabs it out of her hand to see if he can get a signal. And they realize that they can get the the door open just about four or five inches. And he reaches his arm out, right? And he's holding the phone like, can I get a signal? Can I get a signal? And he gets really, really frustrated and ends up dropping the phone. I mean, (laughs) she's a teenage girl. Her cell phone's her lifeline, right? She is so upset. So it's the first time that we sort of see her in her thoughts. She's thinking about her best friend, Amy, who we know and her family does not know is actually her girlfriend. And um, so she dreams about her and she frets because she has no way of reaching her and she doesn't have her phone anymore and, you know, they're going to get out of here and who's going to come and help them. And I mean, I think at this point they're like, you know, someone's going to come by and check the houses and they'll find us and they'll let us go. Maybe it'll be a couple of days, but we'll be okay. I mean, they are in a bathroom. There's water. They end up having to sleep in there for the first night, obviously. And, you know, mom luckily brought a bunch of blankets and they do the best they can. I mean, don't think of this bathroom as like teeny tiny, like you can take three steps to the toilet and that's it. Like this is a bigger bathroom. Not huge, but bigger. Um, I think it's the second or third night they hear something outside and they're trying to figure out like, 
is it an animal? Is it a man? Like, what is this? And Melissa sticks her hand out to try to feel like what it is. Is it a dog? You know, is it their dog? Can't possibly be their dog. But I'll tell you more about that later. She thinks maybe she feels fur. And then she feels like maybe there's a tongue licking her hand. And then the noise that comes out of the thing that is licking her hand is a man's voice saying, am I a good boy? She freaks out. She grabs the tongue and refuses to let go of it until it is ripped completely out of whatever that thing is, his mouth. So now they have a severed tongue in the um, bathroom with them. This is the first time Melissa thinks back to that occult spell she did with Amy. Hmm. I wonder... I wonder if this has something to do with that. So we get our first sort of details of um, Melissa and Amy's little past. So they were caught um, making out in a bathroom by the school bully who recorded them. And they're not ready for the world to know, right? They're just sort of figuring out each other. They're just sort of figuring out themselves. They're just, they're not ready. for. Them. Amy says, I found this Reddit. I found this subreddit. There's, um, there's spells from a grimoire. We can do this one spell. Um, you know, let's, this will keep us safe. And so they need to, to do this spell. They need a tongue. Yeah, they need a tongue. Well, it turns out that the family dog, Spot, the one that Melissa was like, is this our dog? Yeah, it's not their dog because Spot died. So, um, and Spot was buried. And she knew exactly where Spot had been buried and it had only been like a week. So she and her friend went and dug up the family dog and cut out the tongue to use for the tongue spell against this bully. And the, the night after they did it, that evening, he, um, this boy ends up choking on his own tongue and dying. <laughs> that, oh, and the girls are like, we didn't, that wasn't exactly what we were going for. <laughs> oh my God, was this our fault? Did we do this? Like, oh no. Melissa gets really worried. Amy's like, you know, it, maybe he was worse than we thought he was and that's what he deserved. Great. You know, we're a couple days in and Robert finishes his booze and he gets even more obnoxious and cranky and awful. And um, the father says, I, th I think we need to eat the tongue. Like, we need to eat something and we have flesh that can be eaten, so we need to eat this tongue. And um, so Melissa says that she'll, she'll do it. She'll start. And she cuts off a small piece and she manages to choke it down. And when the rest of the family members take their piece, they vomit. He, she's the only one who can hold any of it down. The rest of them are able to just vomit it up and they're just like, this is gross. And at this point, Robert gets so frustrated and with how awful he feels that he takes out the um, cough syrup and, um, and a bottle of NyQuil and he drinks them because he needs alcohol. Remember, the door is like three to five inches open. And, oh, I didn't tell you this. They're in Texas, which I guess is kind of important because of the next thing that happens is that a rattlesnake crawls into the bathroom with them and they flip because, I mean, it's a rattlesnake. They're venomous. <laughs> you know, like, that's not good. So, like, they try to keep an eye on it and they try to huddle in the tub and they... They all end up sleeping in the tub that night to try to stay away from the snake, which I think is kind of nutty because the snake can go wherever it wants because it's a snake, but whatever. Um, so, you know, but it's a, it's a novel. It's a fiction story. We got to take a few things, you know, take it with a grain of salt. So, um, so it's, it's the morning again. It's been probably a week at this point. Bobby... <laughs> Bobby needs to go to the bathroom. He needs to go to the bathroom. He needs to go to the bathroom. He needs to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. Blah, blah, blah. So he jumps up and he um, finally pees in the toilet. And as he's peeing and his sister is like, ugh, like she, he's sighing like it's the greatest thing ever. He starts singing a song about how like, I love to pee and peeing is best, you know, because he's, again, a seven or eight year old boy. And that's, you know, hilarious. And he's obviously enjoying himself. And, um, and all of a sudden he yelps. 
completely freaks out, grabs his own wrist, and starts screaming. He's been bit by the rattlesnake. He's been bit by the rattlesnake. And of course, mom and dad start fighting about how to take care of him. Mom is like, take your belt off. Give it to me. I need to make a tourniquet. And he's like, no, we have to suck the poison out. That's the way it is in every single movie. What are you talking about? So she puts a tourniquet on. He tries to suck the poison out. It's, it, he completely retches and it feels, it's awful. And um, mom, you know, puts the tourniquet on and just starts rocking him, right? This mom gets the um, the garbage can on top of the snake and puts the toilet you know, the back part, the heavy thing on the back of the, the toilet, whatever that's called, the toilet lid, um, onto, like, leans up against the garbage can so that the snake can't turn over the garbage can. Um, so now she's just, you know, cradling her baby and, you know, trying to say it's going to be okay. And Melissa starts to think about the second spell they did. He and he, she and her friend Amy did to try to get rid of the thing that was inside Amy. They thought maybe she was possessed. Maybe something was residing within her. They were scared. And um, Amy said, well, we can do a necromancy spell. Melissa was like, a necromancy spell? You know, I mean, like raising the dead? And he, she's like, well, we're going to want to get rid of the thing that's in me. Whatever that we're only getting this piecemeal because it's like Melissa's memory. So at this point, she starts listening to the conversation um, between her mom and her dad. And this is happening as mom is cradling Bobby. Okay. And dad says, well, so why hasn't he checked up on you? And Melissa, who is, you know, teenage girl, what are you talking about? She's completely ignored. Like there, there is no response to her mom says i told him if i didn't hear he didn't hear from me by midnight then there maybe something had happened and you know and dad's like what do you mean something happened you think you know you thought that i would be you know violent with you what are you talking about and you're scared of me well sometimes yeah i am scared of you and they keep having this this sort of fight and 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 talking about this thing and melissa cannot figure out what the hell is going on and she's like stop ignoring me you have to stop ignoring me tell me what's going on and all of a sudden it's like all the pieces sort of fall into her head and like make a tapestry. And she goes, Mom, have you been cheating on Dad? And she says, Yes, I have been seeing someone. I deserve to be happy. And he makes me happy. And Robert is, of course, freaks out. How dare you? You know, this, you can't be with someone else and this is cheating. And, and she says, She screams at Robert, I asked you to stop drinking. I asked you to help more around the house. I asked you to be around more. I asked you to help more. I asked and I asked and I begged and I begged and you would not change. And I deserve happiness. So yes, she's having an affair. Whoever this guy is, he hasn't come to see them. It's been well over a week. Hasn't checked up on her. So now we've got Bobby screaming or Bobby upset because oh my god my parents are fighting there and mom says you know we were going to tell you the next day after the storm that we're getting divorced the kids freak out Bobby's like don't divorce dad mom tell me dad is lying you know they there's all sorts of freak outs and um Bobby at some point says well who would we live with and Melissa goes well we'd live with mom of course like what kind of question is that and dad gets so pissed why of course why, of course, Mel. Tell me why, of course. And um, and he gets just really mean. And mom gets this little smirk on her face. And she says, well, I'm the only one who seems to take care of them without getting so drunk that I pass out on the front lawn. And I think you're scaring the kids, dear. Well, what ends this particular fight is that Bobby falls into con con convulsions. Total convulsions. Like every mom is crying. Dad is screaming. They don't know what's going on. They don't understand because, I mean, the venom is getting to his heart is what's happening. And that's when Bobby says, Mommy, tell me the story. Now, she tells the story earlier in the in the book because, you know, this is a callback. But um, what it is is it's a story of when he was born. And it turns out that mom went into labor in the Walmart and he was born in aisle 12 or whatever. 
this is a pretty cool story, right? And um, so she starts to tell him the story. He asks all the right questions and they have these like call and response thing that they do because of how often he wants to hear it. And eventually he's quiet and mom just is rocking him and saying, you're going to be okay. 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 You're going to be. And she just, it's like a mantra. And by the time she finishes the story and she's just rocking him and saying, you're going to be okay. He has clearly passed. They wrap him in blankets and they put him in the tub so they don't have to like look at him. They are basically at this point starving to death, right? I mean, now it's been a week and a half. They're a mess. They don't have any nutrients in them out of any kind. Their son slash brother is dead in the tub. Like, it's, it's bad, right? And they keep thinking someone will come, someone will come, someone will help us. But nobody's coming and nobody's helping and like at one point they hear a gunshot and like it they're just like what is happening out there that we are like completely missing out on that nobody's coming to help us right that's weird we you know the emergency services come through and they check you know by house by house and whatever so it's just it's it's pretty bad at this point and dad just he he says f it he grabs the box of alcohol wipes. Alcohol wipes. So we're talking about the thing that you put on your skin so that you don't get an infection. And he starts ripping them open and putting them in his mouth and chewing them like gum. And then once all the alcohol has been sucked out of it, he spits it out. And he just starts doing this. That's an alcoholic. And that's when Melissa starts crying and saying, this is all my fault, this is all my fault, this is all my fault. And her mother's like, how could any of this possibly be your, your fault? And that's when Mel tells them about her wicked ways, about how her and Amy have done some spells. They needed to save Amy. They needed to dispatch this bully. They needed to take care of some things. And he, she says, you know, you know that boy at my school that died that night? We did a spell on him that day. Dad flips out. My daughter's a witch. She's the reason we're in here. This is awful. Now he is like convinced. Mom is like, shut up. I don't want to hear you. Let me talk to my daughter. Then she starts to tell her mom about the other spell that they did, which was to remove the thing from inside Amy that was possessing her. And she says, you know, we did the whole ritual and we both ended up passing out from it. And when we woke up, nothing seemed different. But Amy was really cold and strange and she basically pushed Melissa out of her house and was like, I need to be alone, go away. And it had started raining. And as Melissa got home, the rain got worse and worse until there was a tornado. Did they cause it? <laughs> Did Melissa and Amy do a spell and, and cause <laughs> this? Uh, I think the author wants you to think that. Um, again, dad agrees. It's all your fault. Bobby is dead because of you. Um, Mom says to, to dad, if you speak to my daughter that way again, I will slit your throat. And dad says, well, I look forward to it. I mean, they are just so toxic. <laughs> Melissa sees a NyQuil bottle that dad missed that has about a third of it left in it. And her mother's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she says, I'm, I just, I need to sleep. I just need to sleep. And her mother says, you are not, you can have a sip, just a sip. And she like literally chugs it. And when her mom runs to get her and stop her, she's already had the third. And it doesn't take very long for her to start to feel woozy and, and fall asleep. But she's also remembering, is her mother slapping her? Is her dad punching her? Did she lose her tongue? What's licking her legs? Like, she's completely hallucinating at this point, right? And her hold on reality is, is very loose at this point. And she manages to pass out. And the next morning, when the three of them are all awake, Dad says, oh, the most horrifying thing ever. Dad says, we have to eat him. And the mom is, and Melissa are like, what are you talking about? And he says, we're going to starve if we don't. And mom's reaction is great. She says, then we starve. 
There's no other option. I'm eating my child. Are you out of your mind? So it's at this point that dad starts to admit to them that he can't see anything. He has gone blind. Um, and mom says, you know, those alcohol wipes you ate, I- I'm pretty sure, caused blindness. And he's like, well, why didn't you tell me? And she's like, would you have believed me? Would you have stopped? You would never have. What's the point? So he's like, I can't see anything. And my, you know, my eyesight is gone. And like blood starts to drip from his eyes, right? Because it's, you're not supposed to ingest those things. So um, dad is really frustrated, of course. And he starts lashing out and he ends up breaking the mirror. And then he realizes that there's all these shards of mirror. So he takes off his shirt and he, t- he wraps it around his hand so that he can hold one of the, the longer shards. And he goes over to his son and he cuts into him. And he literally starts like eating his organs raw. Doesn't last very long because the next thing you know, he's leapt out of the bathtub and he's on all fours and he's just vomiting, right? Just gore and disgustingness and um he crawls his way to the to the door to the four to five inches and just starts screaming help a coven of witches is trying to kill me they've killed my boy i need help he passes out in front of the door everybody wakes up because they hear a sound is it music i think maybe it's music And they realize it's Melissa's phone. It must not be that far outside of the bathroom, right? So now that it's ringing and dad knows where he should feel, you know, through the door, he is able to um, to get his whole hand on it. And he pulls it in and he opens it. He says, hello. And he says, yes, yes, of course. Yes. Yes, I understand. No, no, no. Of course. Of course. Of course. Not. I understand. Okay. The minute he's off the phone, he breaks it. And he throws it out the door. Mel freaks out, but he turns on her and says that her, it's her wicked ways that have caused this. And, sh- and he attacks her. His hands are now around her throat. So in the middle of this crazy chaos, mom does the one thing that she thinks might stop dad. She lets the snake go. She literally lets the snake go. It grabs a hold of dad on the cheek, just bites a hold of him and just hangs there. Okay. Until he manages to rip it off of his face, leaving not a lot of flesh. Then in his insanity, he bites the head off of the snake, spits it out. And is screaming the whole time, kill the witch, kill the witch, kill the witch. Until he collapses and dies. So we've got mother and daughter left, and that is it. And mom takes up the largest shard and starts attacking the bathroom door. And she does this for a long time. Melissa's like, mommy does this for, maybe it was two hours. Maybe it was two days. Maybe it was four days. Maybe it was 40 minutes. I really, it seemed like she did it forever until she broke out a little door inside a door. And she manages to crawl through and leaves Melissa alone in the bathroom. And as Melissa is sort of coming in and out of consciousness, She wakes up. She thinks that there's a dog licking her hand at one point. And she thinks, oh, is that Spot? How'd he get his tongue back? I mean, she is having some crazy thoughts. Okay, crazy thoughts. Like she, I don't think sanity exists in her mind anymore. She starts to think that she can hear Amy. Oh, she can feel Amy. Amy's in her lap. She's naked and covered in scars. And she's asking Melissa to wake up. But Melissa, Melissa can't speak. She's lost her tongue. Amy tells her she's done everything she can, but there's nothing else she can do. And our Melissa falls back to sleep until mom crawls back into the bathroom, grabs a hold of her daughter, trying to figure out if she's alive or dead. But if Melissa's still telling us the story, then it's my assumption that Melissa is still alive. And um, Melissa's thinking, "Was, was Amy here? Did Amy visit me? And mom grabs up like gathers up Melissa and puts her in her arms and starts rocking her and says, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. 
over and over and over until the book ends. Now, some people seem to think that there are creatures outside and they are attacking the world and Amy and Melissa have brought up brought about the apocalypse. <laughs> I don't think that's what happened. Um, I personally think that tornado caused far more damage and they just haven't gotten to, the, no one's gotten to them yet to see if they're okay. You know, maybe for some reason they can't. I mean, why would anyone think they'd be stuck in that particular, behind that particular door, right? But, um, but it does leave you sort of, did they do, did, is, is this their fault? Did these girls, these like witch girls do this? Did they really manage to? But I hope you enjoyed and I appreciate you hanging out and um, do me a favor and be nice to people out there and be nice to yourself. I'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>